DJI just released a massive update for the Mavic 3, and one of the things I'm most excited about is to test out the new tele camera settings. But I'm also curious to see if they fix the GPS issue like they promised they were going to. Hey, my name's Jake, and I create content here to help solo creators on the go. So I test and review lots of drones, cameras, lenses, and places like this here at Alaska, and I give you tips and tutorials on how to use them. So if that's something that interests you, consider subscribing. Today we're gonna to cold start the Mavic 3 and see how good the GPS is, if they improved it in this most recent firmware update, but then I also wanna run through some of the other things that they improved, especially when it comes to the tele camera, the telephoto camera system, which I'm very excited the fact that they have now given us manual control over that and we get raw photo support out of it as well. Now, I haven't flown this, I haven't done anything with it since I uh, flew it yesterday other than update the firmware, but I am now more than 50 miles from where I was and it's been a few hours since I updated the firmware, so this should be pretty much a complete cold start of the Mavic 3. We'll see how fast the GPS has been. In the past, it usually took between two to three minutes-ish uh, for me to get GPS lock on this. We'll see how much faster it is now. All right, so it's already faster. I'm already at 10 satellites, which is much faster than normal, but uh, we'll see here. Might take another minute or two, 12. I mean, we're less than, and, and there, home point's been updated, less than about 30 seconds. So that is much, much faster than it's been in the past. So hopefully that's not a fluke. I guess I'll have to test it again when I drive 50 miles back to my house and see if it does the same. But for now, let's test the new settings with the telephoto camera. One thing I have noticed is that it reset pretty much all my settings. So you'll need to go in and reset all of your settings to be the way that they, you had them. But that's pretty easy as far as the camera goes. They also improve the uh, color display assist. So you can flip that on or off right there. And then um, I like to shoot in D-Log, shooting in 5.1K, 50 frames a second. And the big question is, when you switch to seven, which I love the fact that they've gained that or added that right there, just like that, now we have much, much more fine control over the settings. I'm curious too to see how well the autofocus handles. Hey, look, there's some kayakers out there. So already the autofocus seems to be better. It's not hunting or pumping nearly as much as it was before. I'm gonna still just put it on manual focus. Let's see if we can get some shots of these people kayaking. Yeah, the autofocus seems to be working much better. It's not hunting or pumping nearly like it used to. Oh my gosh, it is so much nicer not having to worry about the shutter speed and having the shutter speed set properly where it just gets the correct amount of motion blurs, absolutely fantastic. So already I can tell there's been a huge improvement over the, the previous firmware. The telephoto camera now is a lot more usable, a lot better because you have the controls over it. The focus definitely works better, the autofocus. Still hunts and pumps occasionally, but nowhere near as much as it did. Um, I think I would still recommend finding the focus and then locking it manually. But there are some other changes they made as well, which I'm really excited about too. Along with those really welcome improvements to the uh, tele camera, they've also given us a whole bunch of new ways to customize this controller, uh, the RC Pro. And so if you go into your control settings and you scroll down, go into button customization, you now have a whole bunch of different ways that you can change and adjust your different buttons. And so the right dial now can be customized to adjust aperture and do a whole lot of other things, which is great. And the cool thing is they've given us kind of multi-functionality. So if you push and hold down a, say, C1 button, you can adjust the shutter speed. If you push and hold down the C2 button and use the right dial, you can adjust the ISO. And then uh, the C3 button, which up here, you can push and hold that down on the right dial and then make that be the zoom. 
So essentially now they've given us a bunch of different ways to not have to take our fingers off the sticks, which I hated because I'd be flying along getting a shot and realize I need to adjust something just slightly and you have to stop. Um, it just makes it so much easier to do it this way. So instead of being able to touch here, now I can just adjust the dial, tweak the aperture, get it set. If I want to do this, I can change the shutter, shutter settings. Hold this one down, changes the ISO, which is great. So all those things just gives you a whole lot more control and a whole lot more ability to control the drone without actually having to, you know, take your fingers off the sticks while you're flying and do all of that. DJI definitely made this drone much more powerful, much more capable as a professional level tool in this most recent update. So definitely check that out and update if you haven't. If you wanna learn more about how to improve your drone videos or photos, click or tap right there. I put together a playlist. I'll see you in one of those videos as always. If you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.